beachy head. First time here. Um, the coastal sites, there's probably nothing exciting to talk about. So I think today we need to be able to chat about something else, a bit more important. Flight safety. The intro suggested. I think it's quite important that we start talking about flight safety. I've been in aviation now for 22 years, so I know the importance of safety. I know the importance of finding faults, investigating crashes, sharing that information. Disturbing as it may be for people, as disrespectful as uh, quite a lot of people find it quite disrespectful to be talking about someone's crash because it's fatal or otherwise. I'm very much of the mindset of, by all means, let's respect the people that have died and made those mistakes, but we absolutely, absolutely must learn from their mistakes. Let's not let it be a lesson that we've just passed on and refused to learn anything from, because we need to. We're all in this for fun, we all need to stay safe, and the only way to do that is to actually learn from mistakes. Not only that we make, as the people that survive these mistakes, but we do need to, as and when we can, learn the mistakes that other people have made that unfortunately haven't made it. Now the reason I bring this up, there is a, there has been an accident not too long ago where someone on a BGD Cure 2 is seen having trouble with his wing and then colliding with the ground. And sadly that has resulted in that person's untimely death, which no doubt has absolutely rocked his family's world friends and other pilots that are close by that witnessed the accident. We do have video footage on YouTube. It has been shared, I believe, with the permission of the family so that people can learn from it. And we absolutely must take this opportunity to learn from it. So I'm going to put this video in here and we're going to have to dissect it a bit. We do need to be learning from these things. So you'll see in this video, this chap is happily thermaling away on his BGD Cure 2. See his hands off for a second or so, he's back on. Now what I've noticed in this video, as he gets into a thermal, he starts turning off to the right. You'll notice that the brake keepers are constantly facing down and his hands are further and further out of shot. This shows to me that he is slowing the glider right down to thermal, effectively. We all have to slow down to make the most of the thermal. But then as he looks up, because it doesn't feel right, you'll notice his wing has gone into quite a steady, almost controlled stall. That wing is stalled. And then, sadly, from what I can see, panic is set in and panic has now taken the wheel. The fear that this has caused this guy has suddenly taken control. And you can see that he has actually grabbed hold of his risers. He's not doing anything but input for that wing. The wing now is actually recovering by itself. It has now surged, gone slightly ahead of him. And at this point, he could easily have hands on brakes, jab into that surge, slow it down, 
and then start to fly away normally. He hasn't. Fear has taken control. His hands are flailing around, holding on to his risers, but you can see from these frames that the spiral is perfectly controllable. The wing is flying nicely, but he is not putting in any input. A few things that I'd like to take away from this and things that I've noticed people doing. I've seen plenty of videos where people are sliding their thumbs up and down their risers. Don't do it. For me, that's a big no-no. If something happens to your wing and your thumbs are there, you're likely to brace yourself and grab. As soon as you grab, you can't do anything. You can't even weight shift. And that will affect how quickly that glider can actually recover by itself, let alone how quickly you can put an input in to get it flying faster. Do not get into that habit of just sliding out, hold on to your brakes, get your arms by all means behind the risers for aerodynamics. Do not hold it, do not ride your hands up and down it. thing I see a lot of people doing, a lot of newbies, they hold their brakes like this. You don't have a full throw of your wing by the time you've got your hands down to where you need them by holding them like this. In rough air they can snag, they can come out of your hand, they can spin around your brake lines, they can get tangled. Don't do this. Especially if you've got quite stiff brake handles that sit like that and you pull the middle and see there's actually give in the brake before it does anything to the wing. Hands in or even a half wrap, hold it as close to the line as you possibly can so you've got a direct connection to the wing. Anything you do to these lines happens straight away to the wing. There's no give in the system then. Don't do this. Also up here, you have the full range of movement from your hand working on the brake surface of the aircraft so you can maintain control. We saw in that um, video what happened to the wing, how it reacted, how big the surge was. To me, that was perfectly controllable if you were used to taking your wing outside of the envelope of what we are now doing now. Look at what's in front of us. Everyone's just mooching up and down, up and down, doing flat turns, trying to be efficient. Yes, perfect, we want to be efficient. We want to try and gain as much height as we possibly can. However, if this is all the flying you do, anything outside of it that you're not in control of is going to be scary. So if you're only used to ever seeing your wing above your head, anything outside of that is going to be scary. It's going to induce some fear. It's going to get that reaction that causes people to clench up, not react to the flying, holding onto the risers, absolutely everything that you do not want to be doing when it happens. So what I suggest is that you try your best to get used to taking your wing out of this flight envelope. Now, it'll be irresponsible of me to say that you shouldn't be doing a sieve. Clearly, sieves aren't for everyone, but sieve is a very good place to start. Sieve is a very safe place to start. It's in the controlled con conditions over the safest possible landscape by water with flotation. You should be able to take your wing outside of your normal flight envelope and get used to being able to deal with it. But not everyone's got the money for sieve or the will to go for a sieve doesn't mean you can't take your aircraft out of the normal flight envelope like we're doing now just floating around you can easily look around push out find some space and you can start small exercises slow it down speed it up slow it down speed it up I'm not even doing anything all that energetic or scary but I'm taking it out of the normal flight envelope that everyone gets themselves locked into so we've done our normal back and forwards just on the brakes we can put in some very gentle surges there's no reason why we can't start weight shifting a bit of brake there we go weight shift a little bit of brake weight shift a little bit of brake now I'm not doing anything massively energetic not doing anything massively dangerous but it is outside the normal flight envelope that you see everyone here doing the next thing you could do 
when you've got the space to push out and it's all clear around you is a simple quick turn not quite a spiral but a turn that is going to get you in a position where you start coming around nice and quick nothing scary so you come out of it nice and easy loads of space catch a surge off brakes and let it fly again set up a flagged out landing spot and everyone sets up in it although that might more than likely is just warning signs for the general public Thank you.